This is the main hotline South Korea would like to restore. It's in a room on the South Korean side of its border with North Korea. The green phone is for receiving calls from an equivalent room on the other side. The red one is for making them. Set up in 1971, the line was the basic communication tool between the two Koreas. But last February, facing increasing sanctions after a nuclear test, North Korea stopped using their end. Since then, all communication has been cut. South Korea's Unification Ministry says it's actively trying to change that. The government's most basic position is that for stability, communications lines between South and North Korea should open. We have come up with several ways to recover the lines between the South and North. Asked about economic ties, especially this train line between North and South Korea, which was tested in 2007 but hasn't been used since, the spokesman said such links were important and are being reviewed. Overall, despite North Korea's missile test on Sunday, South Korea's new Liberal President Moon Jae-in is keeping the door open for dialogue. One further sign of optimism here is that since their new president was sworn in last week, there's been a spike of inquiries by South Koreans to the Unification Ministry about contacting North Korean residents. Despite the events of the last few days, it seems South Koreans are hopeful that inter-Korean relations will improve. In New York, as the United Nations Security Council this met to discuss further sanctions, even the U.S. ambassador and suggested talks with, with Kim Jong-un are still possible. He has to stop his testing. He has to stop any nuclear programs that he has. The United States, we are willing to talk, but not until we see a total stop of the nuclear process and of any tests there. South Korean President Moon Jae-in, on his first visit to his defense ministry, said there is still a high possibility of military clashes. But he's not given up on dialogue yet. Andrew Thomas, Al Jazeera, Seoul.